Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and this is the seven series from Hisense from 2022. On this video, I covered a lot of different information, so you make sure you go to the part that works for you. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you guys, don't try to compare this to a very expensive OLED or anything like that. In fact, this 55 inch model that I have here retails around $600. So if you think about that price range for 120 hertz television, I think overall what I'm gonna show you on this video is a pretty good deal. This TV is available in four different sizes and according to display specification, all four of them are VA panels. They have a native refresh rate up to 120 hertz, a motion rate of 480 and they're 10 bit. And these TVs are direct backlight with up to 120 local dimming zones and up to 1000 nits of peak brightness. Overall, this TV has a nice design. I like that it has thin bezels. You also have some wire maintenance on the back of the feet. And down here you have the Hisense logo and below that you have a hands-free voice command so you can use Google Assistant. But keep in mind when you mute the microphone, the lights do stay on. And when you turn the TV around, you have plenty of inputs. There's two USBs, a service port. There's two HDMI 2.0s that run at 60 Hertz. There are also two HDMI 2.1 that can run at 120 Hertz, but one of them does share the eARC. There's an ATSC 3.0 next gen tuner with adapter, you can use composite inputs. There's also a headphone jack, ethernet port, fiber optic output, and it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The picture profiles include Dolby Vision, Dolby Vision IQ, HDR10, HDR10+, and there's adaptive mode, and it also supports HLG picture profiles. Now we're gonna take a look at some testing on the television. I'm gonna show you all kinds of different elements, but keep in mind, you might see some flickering it's not the TV, it's because I'm recording at 60 frames per second. This TV is 120 frames per second, so sometimes there's incompatibility whenever you're using recording. So let's take a look at this contrast test. I will tell you that the black levels are pretty good. As we go over to the grayscale here in the center, it's doing good. But when we get over into this white zone, just like most TVs, you don't see much separation in that grayscale from these last three boxes here. And this is a dot test. It shows you the contrast levels between the black and the whites. I can tell you, I can see just about all those dots. They're very bright, they pop. I can see a little bit of bleeding on the backlights on the bottom, but in my opinion, I think you'll be very happy with the black levels. Plus you have a lot of controls and I'll show you that later on in the video. Next I want to show you guys this uniformity test. You can see it looks pretty good. I mean, I always look for venating in the corners, but I don't really see much on this particular TV. And then as we step up the whiteness, again, it looks pretty decent overall. And when you have a bright TV like this and the technology, it's gonna have some ghosting and I can see some on this TV, but let's go into the settings and see if we can see what options you have. So right now I have an HDR game, but let's see if we go to standard. It gets a little bit darker, but it does look a lot better. And let's go down to theater mode. Now let's go into the backlight and right now it's on high, but let's turn it off. And that seems to clean it up a little bit. And let's say go low, even better. So you can see that you can go into here and adjust the black levels to achieve a better picture quality. And by doing a lot of this, you can get rid of most of the blooming that you're gonna see. Now people always ask me about soap opera effect. And I will tell you that most TVs have controls. So in this one, for example, if I go into picture and then I'll go down to where it shows uh, advanced settings, I have a motion rate right here. So if I turn it off, you can see that top line gets very jaggedy. But if I turn it back on, we can customize it and this allows us to adjust the judder. See, when I turn it down, it gets jaggedy. But as I turn it up, it smooths itself out. Or you don't like the soap opera effect, you can go in here and adjust it the way that you like and make sure that it's smooth for you on the different content you walked in. Now I will tell you that motion clearness is a decent feature. However, I will tell you that the picture gets much darker when you turn that on. So you can see how the TV got much darker. It may smooth it out a little bit, but that's some of the settings that you have to play with if you buy a TV like this or anything that has uh, the Google operating system. And here's a glare test for you guys. And overall, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it is a bright light, but one thing I always look for is that it doesn't have that spear kind of look to it like you get on some TVs. So Whatever light you're gonna get, it's gonna reflect back in the same direction. All right, now let's take a look at the viewing angle. So this is from the front. And if we go over to the side, you see it's not that great. And it's because it is a VA panel. 
and that's definitely how you can tell. So if it's IPS, these viewing angles will look much better. And this is what it looks like from the bottom view in case you head up on a fireplace or something like that. Just kind of give you guys an idea of the viewing angles. Now that was a lot of information that I went over, but I'm gonna tell you, when you put everything together, this TV is beautiful. Here's some content that I recorded with HDR next to SDR to show you the brightness of the TV and the details that this TV can produce when it has a good signal on it. So if you're looking to upscale something like an older 720p signal, I will tell you newer TVs in general are not built for that. They're built for new, high quality content. And as you can see right here, this TV is gonna give you the best results with the newest and the greatest applications, 4K or anything that's on the market. So maybe it's time to upgrade your signal as well as your TV. So this TV's been over about an hour and it looks like it's reading out about 93 degrees as far as the temperature. This TV supports auto low latency, variable refresh rate, free sync premium, and it has some on-screen stats. And I was able to get 14.3 milliseconds of input lag but only have a 60 hertz tester. So real quick, I'll show you guys the gaming zone and a lot of TVs don't have this that has Google operating system. So first of all, you have this information that pulls up this sidebar so you can turn it off and on and you can relocate it. And under the gaming zone settings, you can control the black levels. As you can see, the TV's getting darker as well as the white level. And then you have a few other features like enhance, instant game response and free sync for those PC users. Now I'm switching over to the Xbox. You can see that it is 4K UHD, it's at 120 hertz. When we go into the details, you can see that it does support everything. 10-bit gaming, Dolby Vision, as long as you're using a high-speed HDMI 2.1 cable. Also Now we're going to take a listen to the audio system and for me, it doesn't have enough power nor enough bass response. Seemed like it bottomed out when I was playing these demos. But you're looking at 10 watts by 2, it supports Dolby Atmos output, plus it has Bluetooth, some sound presets, plus a wall mount mode and a built-in EQ. Another thing you can do with this TV is you can go into the sound settings and you can actually calibrate your room using the voice remote control. All you need to do is go into the advanced settings and hit on audio acoustic tuning and then go ahead and hit acoustic tuning setup. And what it's going to do, it's going to start some tests. And with these tests, you're now ready to get the best sound out of the TV. Using this TV as a computer monitor is okay. I will tell you that it doesn't have any PC settings. If I have to pull up Excel sheet, I will tell you that it's not that clear when it comes to computer setup, but maybe if you have a higher end graphics card than I'm using, it may look better. And I want to show you guys the resolution I was able to get. You can see that it does support 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. You also have 29 Hertz at eight bits. But the interesting thing is that when I did the drop down, the refresh rate is 30 hertz max, but when I dropped the TV down to 1080p, I was able to get up to 60 hertz. 
Next, we're gonna take a look at some of the controls in the television. And I can tell you that just doing a speed test, I have 500 megabits per second and it's reaching 131 download speeds and around 36 upload speeds. So it's gonna be great for all the things you see on the screen, like even 4K gaming, 8K streaming, things like that. If you're into entertainment, it has plenty of applications. And those who ask me, it is not compatible with Xfinity as far as Google TV is concerned. But you do have all your major audio applications like Spotify, Amazon Music. You can see there's tons of different audio choices here. And that's because Google has so many different options to choose from. You also have Kodi for people who are using different types of servers. And when it comes to audio, you can switch from the TV speakers to ARC, Bluetooth. You can even add some wireless speakers to it. And then you can go down here and you can set up your digital outputs. And sometimes you need to change these depends on what type of soundbar or audio system you have. There's also a headphone only mode whenever you plug those in. And that's what they have for audio. When it comes into the picture settings, I did show you guys a lot of different uh, things you can do, but you have scene settings where it automatically adjusts itself. There's advanced settings where you can go in here and change the temperature, the motion, and a few other features, including uh, dynamic tone mapping, but it depends on your inputs, and low blue light, and that's gonna be for uh, people who have sensitive eyes. There's also a calibration setting, so if you have all the testing equipment, you can go in here and adjust everything exactly how you want. And you can apply these custom settings to all your sources, or you can just leave it to the source or input that you're on. A lot of people do ask about the storage. So it's 6.5 gigabytes. It's not a lot, but in some cases you can plug in a USB thumb drive and expand that out. You also have ambient mode that's built into Google TV, and this allows you to have a screensaver. So whenever you're not using the TV, it has this nice little menu that you can go through with the remote control but it'll switch different backgrounds. So you have always something fresh to look at. Now, a lot of people don't think about this, but I think this is a really good feature. It's called power on behavior. So a lot of people don't want to go right to the Google screen, especially if they have a cable box or something plugged into it. So you can go in here and toggle it to the last item that was used. And that'll actually keep you from having to hit the input every time that you use the TV. Since it is Google TV, you can also cast different applications from your smart device. And it does support Apple AirPlay. Plus you can go down here and set up the home kit. So you can use voice commands like Siri to control the television, turn it off and on and do basic features. Another thing you can do with this TV is that you can connect it to the Amazon Alexa. So you can scan that QR code and then you can log into your television and then you can actually do some of the basic commands. So you're probably asking me, do I recommend this TV? And I generally don't like to recommend anything because when I used to sell TVs, I knew one thing, I needed to talk to the customers and get all the information before I made a recommendation. But if you're looking for a TV under a certain price point, I think this TV has a lot to offer. You're talking about 120 hertz gaming, auto low latency, VRR, you have that nice little gaming zone. Plus this TV has the ATSC 3.0 tuner so you can get that next gen over the air content. The remote control is very easy to use as a Google operating system. It also can connect to the Google application as well as Alexa and it has built in Apple HomeKit and Apple AirPlay. When it comes to streaming, you can see that it does support higher resolution, but I think overall for the bang for your buck, this is definitely a TV I would consider, especially if you're looking at the Hisense U8H, except for you miss the mini LED and the subwoofer on the back if you get the bigger sizes. But other than that, this TV has a really good picture quality. I think you'll be pretty happy with it overall. I'm Tech Steve, and if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this video helps you out, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!